Hey guys, how's it going? Fred here at Math and Engineering. We're doing parabolic motion again. Okay, we're going to use uh, equations of motion this time, so let's go ahead and get into it. So we have a plane here. Cool drawing, right? I know. And the plane is moving in the positive x direction. Okay, so uh, I just drew an arrow here showing you which direction the plane is moving. Okay, and the plane is going to drop a package. Okay, so let's read the question first. So a plane drops a package at point A, right here, in Italy. So you know why they gave us Italy or they gave us a country on earth because we know the gravi gravity or the, the value of gravity on earth, okay? If they said the moon or something like that, we'd need to use a different value for gravity, okay? So the initial velocity of the package is 150 meters per second. The plane is flying 100 meters from the ground. How far short of target B should the plane drop the package so that, so that it lands here, okay? So all right, what are we given? Okay, so in a question like this, all right, you need to identify exactly what you know, all right? And using kind of a few rules of parabolic motion, like in the video that we did initially, the starter one, the intuitive video, okay, we do need know a few things about uh, parabolas in and, and in parabolic motion, okay? So the one thing that we discussed earlier was that the velocity in the x direction in parabolic motion remains constant, okay? So, and let me just, uh, sorry, this is topic four. In, uh, in our review of the introduction to physics video, we discuss kind of uh, the, the outline of the course, and this is topic four. So, sorry, let's, uh, let's continue. So we have the x velocity, okay, in parabolic motion is always constant, okay? So if the plane is traveling in the x plane here, okay, the x, the plane is traveling horizontally at 150 meters per second and drops the package, the package will also be traveling at 150 meters per second, okay? That's what we know. And at the end of the parabolic motion, the velocity will also remain 150 meters per second. Okay, so we are, let's write down what we're given. Okay, so this is gonna be our, every time we do a question like this, we are going to write down exactly what we know. So the initial velocity, okay, in the x direction is equal to 150 meters per second. Also the final velocity at point B in the x direction is equal to 150 meters per second. Okay, so what's the velocity in the y direction? Well, that's a good question. So as you can see here, we have a parabola, okay? And at the apex of the parabola, as we discussed before, the velocity in the y is always zero, okay? So we know the initial velocity in the y direction, zero meters per second, okay? So let's take a look at what else we know. What are we given? Well, uh, in this part of the question here, and it's always really, really important in these questions to read the question, read it a few times, look through it, see what you can pick out of the question and how the worded question applies to the variables that you've assigned, okay? So, as you can see here, I've written, you know, V naught, T naught, X naught, and Y naught, because that's what those variables at this point represent, okay? So we have the plane is flying 100 meters from the ground, okay? So what does that mean? Well, that means that this distance here, okay, is 100 meters, right? So the point uh, from the origin of the ground to the apex of the parabola is 100 meters, so that means that our, our our y, okay, so we'll say that our y naught, okay, is equal to 100 meters, right? And our y1, okay, that's equal to zero meters, okay? Because this is 100 meters, and then when we're at this point, we're back at the, our, our reference line, our point of origin, and that is going to be zero, okay? So those are good things to know. Also, what is our acceleration, okay? Well, our acceleration in the y direction Okay, that is going to be equal to gravity, right? And that's going to be equal to 9.81 meters per second in the downward direction, okay? So we are going to say that it's negative 9.8, we'll just leave it at eight meters per second, okay? So, and acceleration, obviously, as we discussed, in the x direction is always zero, okay? Because the velocity is constant. Sorry, that's squared. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, also, uh, when we're working with questions like this, we're going to say that this is at our point of origin here, that's where we start, so our x naught is going to be zero, okay? And our t naught, we're also gonna start at time equals zero. So t naught equals zero, x naught equals zero, and then at x one, there is going to be some distance here, okay? So, 
now that we've written exactly what we're given here, okay, we're going to go ahead and start to solve this problem using our equations. So, how do we begin? Well, let's start by writing out our first equation here uh, for the, the motion in the x direction, okay? So, let's just go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Okay, we have x1, we have x0, which is our initial x uh, distance. We're considering that zero because we're starting from here, okay? We have our initial velocity in the x direction, and we have delta t, okay? So that's gonna be t1 minus t0, or the change in time over this period here. And that's going to be plus one half uh, acceleration in the x times uh, delta t squared, okay? And the y equation is exactly the same, except we're using the y variables instead of the x variables. So let's start with the x, okay? So we have x1, and we don't know what x1 is, right? Because this distance is unknown for us. That's actually what the question is asking, right? The question is asking us, and that's what we need to identify, how far short of the target should the plane drop the package? So that means, essentially, what is this distance? That's what we're looking for, okay? How far away does the package need to be dropped in order to reach point B given uh, everything that we're given? So we have x1, okay? So x0, okay, we're starting from zero in the x plane, so that's zero, all right? Plus v naught x, okay, what's the initial velocity in the x direction? Well, we're given that, right? That's 150 meters per second. That's going to be times delta t, okay? So we're going to write that out as t1 minus t0. Okay, so our time at, at this point minus the initial time, or the change in time, okay? That's how we're gonna express that. And as we can see here, uh, acceleration in the x direction is always zero in these types of questions, so that whole term is just gonna be zero. All right, perfect, so what does this leave us with? Well, let's come over here, and if we just take a look at t naught here, okay? We're starting from t equals zero, so this is gonna be zero, okay? So what we're just gonna be left with is x1 equals, okay, 150 meters per second, times t1. All right, so let's leave that there, okay? That's what we know. And let's move on to the y, the, uh, the y direction, okay? The y plane. So let's write this out. So we have y1, okay? y1 is also unknown, obviously, because that's what the question's asking us for. y1, okay, is e going to be equal to zero, right? Because y1 at the end here is going to be when the package is on the ground and that's at the origin. Okay, so uh, y1 is equal to zero. So we have zero, and, okay, and that's equal to, and what's y naught? Okay, well y naught is our initial y, all right? So we have 100, okay, and plus v naught y, all right? So v naught y, what's our initial velocity? And we discussed that before, right? That is zero because we're at the apex of the parabola, all right? We're, we're starting from, from zero, essentially. Zero velocity, okay? So that whole term is going to be zero plus, and then we have one half, right? This part of the equation here. Now we do have an acceleration in the y direction, right? In this case, and it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and fill that in. 9.8 meters per second squared, all right? And we have our delta t, right? And our delta t in this case is going to be, we have t1, right? minus t0, t0 is gonna be zero, okay? And that is going to be squared. All right, so well, what can we do here? Well, we, as, as you can see here now, we have two equations here, all right? And maybe we can do something with these in order to you know, solve for some unknowns, okay? And, and then at the end of the day, what we are looking for is x1, okay? So x1 is what we're solving for, which is this distance here. And let's see if we can find t. So. In this case here, all right, in this equation, we'll number these one and two. Okay, in equation two, as you can see, we only have one variable, and our variable is t. So let's go ahead and solve for t. So we have 100 here. Let's move that 100 to the other side, okay, of the equation, and we're left with negative 9.8 squared over two, okay, times t1 squared. So we're left with negative 9.81 meters per second squared over two times T1 squared. Okay, so if we go ahead and we just, you know, move the, multiply both sides by two, take the negative 9.81, divide, okay, we can say that T1 is equal to the square root of negative 200 over negative 9.8. These negatives are gonna cancel, because obviously we can't have a negative in a square root. 
and we should be left with T1 is equal to 4.518 seconds. Perfect. Okay, so as you can see now, this is just a case of solving a system of two equations with two unknowns. We're just gonna take this T1 and we're going to plug it into our equation one here. And that should give us, right? We have 150 meters per second times 4.518 seconds. And that is equal to 8, we should get 677.7 meters. Okay, seconds are gonna cancel there, and that's it. So what does that answer give us? What does that mean? Well, that means that this distance here, okay, this distance here is equal to 677.7 meters, okay? Okay, so that's a tricky question, right? It's, and uh, I'm sorry, it's a little hard to explain, but I hope I kind of got the point across here with uh, the equations here. Honestly, I mean, uh, practice a couple of these. This is definitely gonna come up in your midterm for uh, physics mechanics, but it, it might even actually be harder than this. So, you know, really understand the concepts and what I really also suggest practicing before we go here is making sure you write all of your givens down. Okay, Give, write everything given using uh, what you know about parabolic motion, for example, you know, the, at the apex, the y velocity is zero, x velocity is always constant, there's no acceleration in the x direction, those kind of things will really help you solve these types of problems and always read the question and identify what you're given and what you're looking for. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and uh, come back for more.